Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to do an unboxing of the Ender 3 V3 Plus. Um, it's basically a K1 Max bed slinger. Um, it arrived on my door this morning and I'm just going to open it up and have a look. At the end we will print off one of these little torture tests that tests um, overhangs and bridges and stuff to see how well that prints. So the printer is a 300 by 300 by 330 printer. It has auto bed leveling, nozzle temperature gets to 300 degrees, bed temperature gets to 100 degrees, uh, prints PLA, TPU, PETG, ABS, PLA, CF, PETG, CF and carbon. It has auto detection, uh, filament run out auto detection and it has power loss recovery as well. You, do, you can use a USB or a LAN to print to the printer and it uses G-code base, so it's a G-code printer just like most of them. And the recommended software is Creality Print. I use Creality Print 5.0.3, which I find really good. They've done a really good job, especially with the profiles for the Creality printers. If you've got a Creality printer and it's one of the latest ones, they've done some really good profiles and a lot of work getting them the profiles right so they, the printers print really nicely. If you haven't seen any of my um, videos come out or any of the pictures that I've been posting online, I'm posting lots of them. <laughs> Um, go have a look, you'll see the quality coming out of these printers. I'm currently doing a Droid Decker. That's my biggest print. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> it's over seven foot tall. It's uh, one of those, the Star Wars um, Phantom Menace, I think it was in. Uh, the rolling ball things that turn into guns and stuff. And shoot things. I'm doing one of them, a life-size version of one of them. Anyway guys, let's get into this opening of this printer and testing how it prints. Okay. Okay guys, just before we start, I do have an affiliate link listed down below and a like and subscribe would be much appreciated. It helps the channel out a lot and really it's just a click for you guys. So I really do appreciate a, um, a subscription and a I like tick. And if you have any comments you want to make, just make them down below, I'll read them all. Okay guys, thank you. If you haven't already guys, come on. <laughs> what have we got? And a set of tools. What's in here? Plus some screws and stuff. Yep. Manual with the um, stickers. Set of cutters. Come on. That might be separate. Your spool holder. Which is these. The old um, nozzle clog remover. These are really good guys. If you haven't tried them, they're great. Heat your nozzle up and shove that down through your extruder. Gets rid of a lot of um, jams. This will be the display. Power cable. Ugh. Okay, and these will be the stabilization rods. That go up the um, at the back of the printer. Now, better than the um, the V3 because it's on a reel. Reality, good, good. I can use that. The last one we I got was on a was loose. It's just um, just hard to use when they're loose. Let's get the gantry out. Oh, it's a big one. Oh shit, sorry. That's big. It's good. It's good. Oh. Okay guys, so this is the V3, the normal V3 build plate. That's how much bigger it is. A huge difference. Yeah. So V3, V3 Plus. Cool, looks very similar. So what you've got is a USB on the side here. This is the um, stepper motor connection here. This will be the one that goes up to the print head. And then on the other side, 
we have the all important power switch. I can't see what it's on. You've got a little label over it. You've got to take the label off before you. <laughs> 230 volts. Okay, so if you're in the places that take 240, 230 volts, and you got this set to 115, you're going to have problems with your printer. It's not going to like it very much, probably blow your board. So there's another um, stepper motor connection. Okay. So, I'll do the right thing. I'll open up the manual. They're pretty easy. You don't really need the manual, but still. Ah, I love the little stickers they give out. That's a new lot. Where is it? Yeah. Okay. I recycle these plastic bags. They're good for holding cords and stuff in them. So I reuse that. Service card. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Let's get the gantry. Okay. Let's make sure there's no foam in it. Okay, so just basically what we're going to do is put these stepper motors go into this um, opening here. So that should be nice and easy. And just make sure it's facing around the right way. And just plonk them in like that. Get our screws out. Screw it in place. It's all pretty easy. <laughs> Oh, sorry about having to sit down guys, but my back is killing me. So they've obviously had a few people not follow directions because on this side, if you can see just here, covering up the holes to put the screws through, they got this little label and the label says, make sure you do the power supply. So that's, um, that's good thinking by Creality. Stops, um, stops a lot of support calls I'd gather. Let's say, oh, your bloody machine ain't working because I did it incorrectly, but it's all your fault. <laughs> That's just human nature. Blame someone else. Get some screws out. Shark them on top of there. Get out the old Allen keys. Okay. So basically all it's going to be is um, two screws in each side. The right Allen key might help. The two screws is um, two in the side here and two in the other side, and I'm gathering there's going to be two underneath as well. So two here and two on this side. Right here. Yeah, I should have put them on the floor to start with. See on the bottom here there's two screws here and there's two down the bottom exactly the same. So they just require some screws in them as well. Okay, so the other two down the bottom here. Of course, when you're ever putting screws in, you don't over tighten them, guys. I'm sure you're all aware of that. They don't need to be wrenched on as tight as you can get them. Just do them um, long end in first. Do them up till you get tight and then like a little nudge with the um, short end. Not even quarter of a turn. On the sides here, these little here, the um, bigger of the two plugs, so you've got a white one and a black one. The bigger of the two will go into the motor. There's only one way it can go. It's got a little ridge on it and the ridge goes towards the opening. And you just push it in. Exactly the same on the other side. The other side has only got the white plug. It doesn't have this little black one here. All right, so the little black cable, there's another little Inside here, there's another little cable just there. So those two cables fit together. So that's the limit switch. That tells it when it's at the bottom of the, this is at the bottom. So if you don't plug that in, it might cave into your, um, into 
your bed, which you don't want. Yep. So that, that one just plugs in there. And the other one plugs into this stepper motor. And on the other side, there's just a stepper motor one. Okay. They're also labelled. So, oop, they're labelled right and left. So as you're looking towards the front of the printer, your right is the right one. So the one with the little cable bit on it goes on the side with this big long cable dangling off it and it has it facing out because the cable is going to clip into that yeah so all you do chuck a screw through so there's a screw hole at the back here and you just screw that into that screw hole and the other one will go up into the top here so the reason um, this has these poles on it and the V3 doesn't is because as it gets higher and higher and higher, the, um, the gantry can wobble a bit. So it gives it a bit more stability to sort of um, to hold it in place. It goes from here and it, just, oop, and it just plugs in at the top here. So it's just got this um, support on either side at the back. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just doing exactly the same thing on the other side. So at the top, you've got these little um, connecting bits here and the pole, the screw just goes and it screws in. It's a, it's a threaded hole in there. So the screw just screws straight into the metal. This here is your filament runout sensor. So the first bit you plug in is midway along this cable. There's this where the yellow tab and stuff is. It says caution. You must first insert wire into wire clamp. Oh, okay. So we'll do that. And what's this one say? Get the of the get the of the black positioning label of the flexible cable cable flexible flat cable stuck at the live what the fuck? Okay. So basically chuck it in where the label is. <laughs> And then we will come down here and plug that in. So the little white plug goes in there. That seems a bit sort of, why is it? Okay, and this, can okay, it go inside or outside? That's a good question. Yeah, it'll go inside. Surely it goes inside. Okay, so, and this cable <clears throat> will come through here, follow this Bowden tube. So the Bowden tube, basically why we have a Bowden tube on a um, direct drive printer is because it just guides the filament so you don't have dangly filament getting caught and stuff. It makes it go a certain way and make it not get caught on stuff. But it's got to come through this filament runout sensor, your filament will load up through the filament runout sensor, go through the Bowden tube and it gets drawn in from here. It doesn't get pushed like on a normal Bowden system, you'd have the extruder down here and it would push it through the Bowden tube, but this one pulls it through the Bowden tube. So that's the difference really. And this um, plug, <coughs> there's a little white plug just up the top here of the, um, the print head. So that's what we're plugging into. So we're just plugging that straight in like so, like straight down. And then we pull it down over and put it in here and get this little contraption. And we just lock that into place. So it just clamps in. And then what you want to do is we want to get these little things and put it through the Bowden tube. So these little clips that came with it. I don't know if you can see that, these little clips. Okay, they just thread through the Bowden tube. And what that does is hold this cable in place. And keep them together as a nice little bundle. Before you plug the Bowden tube in. Now I'm not gonna plug the Bowden tube in because I wanna feed the, um, the filament through first. But before we do that, got one more thing to do. So here we just pull off the 
label that's holding the ribbon cable here in place. And that's for our display, which is in this little box here. Not box, in this packet. So we can peel off the... Oh yeah. It's got a switch on it. Oh my God. Another one, another little thing saying, so that's the third notice I've had to say, make sure your power's right. So make sure your power's right, you kill your, you'll kill it. And that won't be covered under warranty. And neither should it, because they've warned you and warned you and warned you. And it's even got it in the manual. So that's four occasions it tells you to check your power. Uh, if you choose not to check it, silly, silly. So these little lugs here go in these two little holes. So you just, that's the direction it goes. Basically it goes so then the, the bigger part of the curve is down the bottom. And you um, fiddle around and just push that. That there has this little bit of a ribbon cable in it. So it's just a push and, push and plug. If I can get it in. Ah, there we go. That's in, I wasn't pushing it in the right spot. Ooh. Okay, so that's it, just push it in. And then these little lugs, it's got a, um, if you can see it, it's got wider at the top, then goes down to narrow, so it just in clamps into place. Now, what you might want to do too, because these move so fast, and it vibrates a fair bit, sometimes this can vibrate and move up a bit. And if it moves up a bit to there, your bed's gonna hit it. And if your bed hits it and slows the bed down a bit, it's gonna stuff your print up because it thinks the bed's moving at a certain speed and if it's not, the head's gonna be, you know, it's just gonna put the alignment out a bit. So what I suggest you do is once you've got it down, put a little, you can either get a little dob of hot glue and just dob it at the top to stop it moving up um, or just get a bit of double side tape and just pump it between the, the head and the base and it will stop that, that vibration moving that at all. Just a hint, you know. Or every now and again, just make sure it's pushed down. Okay, that's it. Oh, one more thing. So I'm gonna use a filament dryer and connect it straight up and then run it through the, so it comes straight out the dryer through the Bowden tube. So I connect the Bowden tube up to the dryer and just run the Bowden tube up and connect it through the, um, through the filament runout sensor. Um, I've used that on my other printers. So basically this is the way the um, filament holder goes. You just it's got this little run, it's like a light, light, light socket, the old sort of light sockets, which you put it in and just twist it and then it will clip into place. And what you do is these little holes, the same sort of thing, they've got a big bit at the top and a little bit down the bottom. So the big bits go to, and just clamp it down. So the big bits go in, the, in the, the, the screws go in the big bits and you just push it down, it locks it in place. Now this here, once your filament rolls on, you just Clip that in there, either side of the filament, and it sort of keeps the filament um, so the filament doesn't come off the reel and wrap around here and cause a jam as well. So I might as well use the one Creality sent me and see how that goes, because um, it's hyper PLA. So this is hyper PLA. So on your slicer, especially if you're using Creality Print, make sure you tell it you have Creality Hyper. So if you've got the wrong filament set in your slicer, it's going to produce a crappy print. Just so you know. Okay. I know this because I accidentally did it. Oh, you know what I haven't done? I haven't put that on the right way. So if you can see the problem, if I put this on here, it's got to go over there. So stupid me, put it on the wrong way. So, it's easy fix, just undo it, and it's on this side. So it faces the back basically. So then when the filament comes out, it rolls straight into that. So, now whenever you're cutting filament or taking it off a um, reel, my recommendation is to um, push a bit of the filament out and then grab hold of it. Don't let it go especially when it's out of that little hole. So when I cut it, I always hold this bit and cut the, cut the spare bit. Because if you hold this bit and cut this bit, it could tangle and you might not realize it. 
So never let go of this once you've unhooked it from the reel because sometimes it can just, what it does is loosens up like, like that and you've got loose bits there. And if it crosses underneath one and you don't notice it, somewhere between here and halfway, it's gonna jam because the knot will get, will, will work its way through and it'll go to the point where it can't do it anymore and it will jam up your um, your reel and then you'll have a nozzle printing in midair and nothing coming out of it because it's thinking the um, filament's getting loaded but it's not. So what we do now is you put it on so it's, it's coming out the bottom, if you can see. So it threads out the bottom and then it comes, oh, the other thing you want to do is probably just straighten it a little bit. And there's a little hole down the bottom of your filament runout sensor here. So you thread it through that and you thread it until it comes out the other end of the Bowden tube. See, like so. So I have about that much sticking out. I then unlock. So unlocking is just getting this little lever on the top here and pushing it away. So basically I get it, push the lever across to the right as you, from the front, as you want it from the front. Then I get the, the filament and I feed it down through. If you have a look here, just under there, there's a little white, you can see the little white thing. So that's the hole you stick the, the filament in and you wriggle it around and feed it and it won't go anymore. Should be going down further than that. I reckon it's got some filament in from testing. Once you've got it in as far as it'll go, flick the switch across, push the Bowden tube down, and make sure it goes in. Now, good that this has happened. You see how the filament has um, come off the reel here like this? When you're putting it back on, just make sure it goes back on in order so you're not twisting it. But that is what this thing's meant to do. That's why you put it on like so. And it's meant to hold it. See how the bit sits at the bottom here? That little bit there. And it comes up and it's meant to stop it coming out. More so on a normal, normal size roll, but that'll do. Okay. So that's just moved up. So I've just pushed it back down because I've been handling it a fair bit. So that's what I mean by checking it every now and again. Right, last thing to do is plug it in, then turn it on, and we'll go through all the um, setup on the screen. And we will print out No, it won't. I won't print out one of their prints. We'll print out one of my prints because their prints will be made to run on this machine. So let's see if I can do one using Creality Print 5. That's powering up. That's a positive sign. First off, ask for your language. So I'll just go English and go next or whatever language you are. And then, um, of course, read the policies and stuff. And if you're happy with it, then go, yeah, I've read them and go next. Ask you for network. Okay, so once you put it in, you go next. Then ask for time zone. So I'm in plus eight. So I'm on the same time zone as China. Plus eight. Okay, and then it's... Um, Basically gives you a, there's a um, barcode type thing there that you need to scan on your phone if you want to connect it to the cloud. Um, let's go next. I'll, fix, I'll sort that out later. Um, Self-check, so it's going to do a self-check now. It takes a little while, so 15 minutes. So we just start that, and while it's doing it, don't touch it because it's going to do vibration tests and all that sort of crap. So, away she goes. <coughs> okay, so it's going through doing a few, making sure the um, stepper motors are working and stuff, and now it's going and leveling the, um, the bed there. Now I'm on a pretty um, riggedy old table there, so that's probably why you can see a tiny bit of movement in the gantry. I'm gathering the whole table's moving, yeah, the whole table's moving. <laughs> so if you can hear that noise, it's doing a vibration test now. which is all part of the input shaping. <laughs> a few moments later. Okay, 
So that's all finished. So I'll just go OK. Now before I do the print, what I need to do, uh, we won't worry about that at the moment, um, but what you should do, you should load the, the current firmware. I'm not going to because I'll do it later because I know it's going to have to redo that whole test again. But because I've loaded new filament, I need to come in here and extrude some of it. So it's the second tab down and you come over to extrude and down the bottom here is the extrude button. You just go extrude. So when you're taking it out, you do the other one, retract and it'll pull the, pull the, um, the filament out of the extruder. But now it's got to heat the head up so it can push some filament into the extruder. So it's heating that up pretty quick. Okay, so it's got, once again, some filament left over from the testing. Yeah. Okay, so you get this little stick. The print head's at, is that 220? It's 193, so it's enough. So you get this little stick and you push down on the little stick. And see that? So that, that was probably left in from testing. And just make sure you've got it all out. And then when I put this in, it should go in all the way. Okay, so now if I push this down, down and then go extrude. So I'm doing another extrude now. And out she comes. That's a pain in the butt. But that's what these are really good for. These little, um, these things. And now that that just had a, so when the it shows they've done testing on the machine yeah so when they've done testing they've um not sure why it gets stuck in there it's probably done ages ago and the filament's just dried in there and just hasn't just just out of reach of the of the head so it hasn't melted when i've heated it up so it just needs to be pushed down into the head and then it melts and then it comes off so you should have that little bundle over now I can sub a test print off to it, so I'll just push home on that. So now I come into Corality Print. I'm going to run um, print this little torture test out. So basically, it does bridging here, it does overhangs here, it does lengths and measurement things here. Now it does have other tests on the other side, but I cut it in half because that's not really what I'm interested in. Um, it's got all the writing you can check, but mainly what I want to see is it does do the bridging right, and how far up the overhang in degrees does it before it craps up and that will tell you what to set your supports when you turn supports on what this angle needs to be okay so it'll be a hundred take this will give you whatever angle that's meant to be and that will um, give you nice little bridges all the time now with this because you're testing all the bridging and stuff you don't want supports on so we turn supports off and we don't want a raft so we make sure there's no brim there and we don't a raft or brim we don't want that and I'm going to print it up here at a 0.2 layer height. Um, and I use the uh, Acrane, uh, Arakan. Oh, I don't know what that is. Whatever that wall generator is. You've got <laughs> you either have the classic one or the new one. This one tends to work better with, with what I do. Because that's all, all I change is from the default. And it, you can see up here it's the end of 3 V3 plus profile. I've made sure up here... No, I haven't. Now I have to do that again. Damn it. It is the, um, you nearly forgot that, Hyper PLA. So make sure you got that printed because if I printed it with the PLA mat, it wouldn't have printed very nicely. So we're going to make sure it's the Hyper PLA. I'll just go through and check all them again. So it's 0.2. I do three walls and 5% infill. And I make sure it's the gyroid infill. So that's just what I use. Um, Speed settings, you can change the speed settings here, but I leave them as default. You can see it's fairly quick with the acceleration and stuff there. So the default one works really well. Um, make sure there's no support. Make sure there's no brim. And I can slice it, and I'll send that off to that printer. Um, but there you go, it's done. Now, one other thing I need to do, make sure my device is in here. And it's not, I can't see my... So they're the ones I've got. There's my KE, there's my V3. There's my max and my K1. So I'm going to scan over here and check for that, see if we can pick up that plus printer. It's got to be on the same network that this is on. And you'll see there's a the plus there. So I can add that to my little list and it will appear down here. So there are all my Creality printers I've got running at the moment. Um, I do have others, but uh, they're the slow sort. I don't use them much anymore. <laughs> Okay, so come back here and I can now go land printing and then pick from the list here, there's my plus. 
and then I will just go one click printing and it will send that off and if I come back to the printer you'll see it started printing and you'll see on the display there it should have display here it's got my little model that I just sent it and away she'll go Okay, so she's finished. Okay, let's have a look. Shall we? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of shit. Okay. Let's have a look. So, holy cow. Well, that's the best, um, out of all my Creality's and my bamboos, that would be the best, ah, oh, damn it, break that off. The best overhang I've had. Let me just cut that little bit off instead of trying to pull it off. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see the overhang? It's it's acceptable. Maybe the top one, the um, 81 probably. Yeah, it's got lines on it, but usually it's just hanging crap out of there. But that's it. You could use that on a print. This um, This steeper one. The top one's got a few little lines on it. It's not too bad. And the um, the bridging, look how nice the bridging is. Text. And the text in here. So, wow. This is by far the best one I've done of this out of all my printers because I can even read all the small all the small printing has come out as well usually that's a problem on uh, both the bamboos and the Creality ones but wow that is impressive can, can you actually see that bridging so I'm very impressed very impressed this is yeah this is way better than any of the, like I've got a Bamboo P1S and a Bamboo A1 and my K1 Max and the K1C um, and the Ender 3, V3 and a KE and this is by far better than any of them which is strange wow because usually you've got a bit of lag or something in the bridging and the overhangs is usually um, a lot worse than that that's the best overhang so that's um and all, all of them have problems with the really small writing oh, okay so there you go the ender 3 v3 plus very impressed with first off i'm now going to build a um zora cat she has one on the live stream it's so about this big so i'm going to split it in half and print half on this and half on my K1 Max and then I can have compare the two and I'm going to max out the bed on both of them so see how that goes if you haven't seen my Droid Ecker series I'm doing one a huge build and if you <laughs> have a look this way that's um that's the bottom part of it the top part's even bigger okay I gotta take it off the bed to do the top part because it'll hit the roof <laughs> and it, it's the width of the um, queen size bed anyway I'm taking over my son's room to do this because you know, I'm moving shit but yeah very impressed oh yeah so if you made it this far subscribe and like please <laughs> and I, I bring these out as much as I can it's usually one video a week 
Um, if you have got any comments, um, please leave them below. And I do have an affiliate link down below if you're thinking of buying one of these printers. Um, it'd be much appreciated if you use that affiliate link. It sort of flings me a little bit of commission. Not a lot, but it's, you know, every little bit helps when you, you know, need filament and stuff. Okay, guys. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate the support. You might like one of these or one of these videos um, that I've made in the past, so feel free. Okay, thanks, guys. Bye.